Hi, thank you so much. Uh, just to let you know, I might be looking a bit on the right because I have two screens and uh, part of it is on my other screen. So uh, thank you very much for the introduction. My name is Babis and this is my colleague Pierre. Uh, we are from King's College London from the Blue Jay uh, team and we've created a tool for a uh, frame-based Python for the microbit called Stripe. So I'll, I'll start with uh, 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 it's it's a free online programming uh, tool, and it's not yet another programming tool for the microbit because it takes a novel approach to programming uh, called frame-based editing. So the main two programming paradigms uh, for programming ed uh, education are block-based and text-based programming. Block-based programming is usually considered as the most appropriate uh, style for introducing programming to learners. Uh, it builds on the idea of direct manipulation, like you know, drag and drop, and uses recognition over a call in order to help users interact uh, with the language in a more uh, prompt way, let's say. Moreover, it reduces much of the burden uh, that syntax introduces and thus allow the user to focus mostly on the concept of programming rather than the syntax itself. Uh, nonetheless, block-based programming is not perfect as everything in this world, uh, and it's limited to the basic programming concepts, uh, more or less, and features, and it's not very productive for more advanced users, uh, as complex programs consume much of the uh, screen space and cannot be edited quickly. So on the other hand, we have text-based editing, uh, which is focused more on the advanced user, uh, who is aware uh, you know, of the language features and syntax. Uh, it's most, mostly support keyboard-only interaction, which again, for advanced users, uh, may be more productive, but for uh, novices, you know, it's not great. So then a main question uh, remains, which is how do we transition easily from one style to the other? Uh, so different techniques have been proposed for this transition, such as you know tools with side-by-side -side editors where they show block-based and text-based editing at the same time, or other systems that translate code from one to the other and vice versa. So in an effort to combine uh, the, the good aspects of both block-based and text-based programming, uh, we created a new programming paradigm that is called frame-based editing. So it supports at the same time uh, direct manipulation uh, and basic syntax error avoidance as, as blocks do, but also uh, keyboard all interaction and uses uh, recognition uh, rather than recall. So frame-based editing is thus a stepping stone between uh, blocks and text programming, which could potentially help in transition from one to another uh, due to its keyboard-only interaction and the more compact and structured visual presentation, and could be even used in the longer term uh, from advanced users. So before I show you uh, how Stripe looks like, I would like to let you know that you can find it on stripe.org uh, and it's completely uh, free to use. So let me load the page now. And... Excuse me, oh, there we are. Yep, so that's our landing page, and I'll uh, do now, I don't know, can you see my screen or is it stuck? It says uh, so it, 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 Yeah, it currently looks uh, stuck. Let me probably try to turn off and turn on again. Allow sharing screen one. Yep. Now you can see it probably. Yep, so that's our landing page. Uh, by clicking Start Coding, uh, you're going to get into uh, this uh, this environment. Maybe I should also try to increase the font a bit. Yep, I think it's a bit clearer now. Uh, so this is the, the user interface of Stripe. As you can see, it is split into two more or less main uh, sections. The one on the left, the uh, the, the dark green, like green, let's say, and the one on the right, the, the light green. Uh, in the left of the screen, we have the coding area where all the frames can be placed. On the right, we have the list of frames uh, available to the users, and we'll come back to them later. So before I continue, I think it's a, it's a bit important to explain what a frame is. 
So a frame is a distinct visual element which describes a specific programming construct, such as a for loop or the while loop, as you can see here. Uh, an if statement or a function call. Uh, it can be manipulated directly, uh, i.e. drag and drop, so as you can see here with the while. Uh, and may enclose other frames within it. Uh, and that's for everything that has a body, like the loop. So while, uh, as I said, is, uh, is, a, is, is a frame uh, and can be drag and dropped and contains other frames within it. So through the context menu, you can cut, copy, uh, duplicate, disable, even delete frames. Uh, in order to allow us, though, for a keyboard on interaction, we have uh, designed uh, the, this blue uh, cursor line, which we call it caret. And the caret is an indicator of where you are currently editing and contextualizes the frames uh, that can be added, added at its place. It can be moved by both the, both the mouse, like by clicking, and the keyboard through the up and down arrows. So coming back to the list of the available frames on the right, uh, the flame, frame palette, as we call it. Uh, it shows all the available frames that can be added at a given um, at a given place based on uh, Python grammar. So the given place is always where the card, the blue line is. Um, so the symbols on the left, uh, as you can see here, the I, the F, are keyboard shortcuts uh, that spawn the frame to the position of the cursor. Uh, the new frame will be added, as I said, where the card is. So different card places may allow for different flames. So for example, if I go inside the while loop, you can see the break and continue uh, appearing. And uh, if I press I for adding an if, uh, inside the if you can see also the elif and the else appearing. So in order to keep uh, consistency with uh, Python, but at the same time try to organize uh, the you know, the coding uh, area. We have created three sections in the coding area. The top one is for the imports. The second one is for the function declarations. And the third one is the main code. Uh, as you can see, if I move the card from one to the other, different uh, frame uh, options appear on the right. So here I can declare a function or comment, and here I can import uh, things. Uh, another interesting uh, element of the UI is the editable slot. So every frame has at least one uh, area where Python textual code uh, can be added by the user. Uh, the method call, uh, the frame, for example, uh, which is the, the function call, yep. Uh, Uh, are blank, so these are blank frames, the function calls, with only one editable slot that a user has to write Python code in it. So this way, uh, actual uh, textual Python code is used alongside with uh, the visual frames. And also uh, modern uh, coding aids like auto-completion and uh, auto parenthesis matching uh, and text highlighting are available in Stripe. Let me delete that. So in order to further support the keyboard only interaction, we have implemented frame selection and manipulation through keyboard commands. Uh, for example, I can select uh, multiple frames with the shift and the arrows and I can uh, as soon as I select it, I can copy them, uh, cut, paste, uh, with the usual control or command C, X, and V command. So I can copy here and probably paste, yep. Uh, I can also delete with the backspace or the delete button. Uh, another recognition over recall feature of Stripe that uh, targets to support uh, learning is the microbit api explorer so we're assuming that you know most of the users that come to stripe don't really know by heart all the microbit api which is quite uh, broad and vast uh, so the idea is to have a panel here like on the right where you can go and explore things and try to find also things and for example if i want to display a message on the screen even though i've done it already but 
uh, I can I can I can go on the LED display, get some information of what this is. It's about the five by five LED display, and I can go and see what uh, uh, methods uh, API methods are there for that. So uh, if I want to display uh, or scroll uh, something to the screen, I can go and see what that does. Oops. I, I can see, uh, uh, you know, a more detailed uh, API uh, description, but not useful for every user. I can select it and add it straight to the code. Uh, I can I can type anything here. I don't know something like hello. And so, in terms of standard functionality, undo and redo, as you can see here on the left, are available for the user. And also, there is uh, a menu on the left that you can uh, load your project, save your project, uh, change the project name, and even translate the UI to different languages. Uh, we have friends, for example, here uh, that works at the moment. And through a, a button click, you can convert your code to a Python uh, file and you can open it and use it however you like. And lastly, in terms of um, integration with the microbit microcontroller, you can send your code to the microbit with a simple uh, click. Uh, so that happens for uh, Chrome and Edge, for Firefox and uh, Safari and the others. Uh, you need to download it first and then set it as, as with every uh, online microbit tool. So uh, this system that you see here has gone through uh, a usability evaluation, and we are currently also preparing for a, for a study to assess the effectiveness uh, of the tool in helping transition, as we said, from uh, the block-based to the text-based paradigm. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can find Stripe at stripe.org. And at the moment, we are also preparing a Python-only version uh, with an integrated console to test and run your code uh, in the tool, which again is towards the idea of uh, going to you know actual Python after. Even though this is also actual Python. Uh, so, with this, I would like to sum up and thank you for listening. Uh, I'm happy to take questions, suggestions, or feedback. And feel free to to connect with us, me or Pierre, drop us an email or ask us questions or tell us about your uh, tool or whatever uh, related to our work you have. So thank you so much. I think I'm on time. Not. Yes, yeah, can... well within it. So th thank you so much, uh, Babis, for an amazing presentation. As, as someone that, you know, I've spent a lot of time working with young students in block-based coding, uh, trying to make the transition to Python or JavaScript myself, um, I've always found the transition to be very uh, difficult. Um, so always great to see, you know, some solutions, some supports for that. Um, just a, a couple um, things to take note. And, and uh, Pierre, thanks so much. I, I know you've been helping um, answer the questions as they've been coming in. Um, I don't know if you'd like to uh, add to this at all, um, but we did have a, a suggestion slash question from, I believe it's Massiege, um, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, who asks, why don't you take text out of the blocks to build with small modifications of program text in Python? Uh, we use this approach in Poland as a smooth move from blocks to text. Um, and so I'm not sure, because I know Pierre was asking for a little more context there. So I don't know if you um, have any feedback for that, or if not, maybe we can ask Massiege to, uh, to just kind of clarify on that. And then if not, we can move on to uh, some other questions. What is the question again? Sorry, can you can repeat the question because I, I couldn't uh, listen to all of it. So they yeah. said that we should... So it's, so why don't you uh, take text out of the block to build with small modifications of program text in Python? I'm not really sure what this question actually is asking for. So... Okay, so... We'll, we'll see if they can maybe clarify um, in the chat. And then uh, we also have um, Mechdad asking, what is the format of the uh, exported file? And they're asking if it's hex. So if you're about to try uh, the, the one for the microbit, yes, it's a hex file. 
yeah, you download a hex file. I think I can show a bit what's happening. Uh, screen one. Yep. Can you see my screen? Probably you can. Yep, you can. Uh, so if I export into microbit, uh, you know, I'm prompted with a, a hex file and I have to download the hex file. There's also a small, you know, kind of guide of what you do. You first connect and then you transfer the hex file to your uh, microbit. But if it's, uh, if I'm on Chrome, I think I can show that on Chrome as well. On Chrome, you can directly send it uh, to your microbit as soon as it's connected to the uh, to the device. Any other questions? Um. Pierre, did you manage to uh, to answer the question of uh, uh, this person that I couldn't really understand what? They were asking for. I I don't think we've gotten any uh, clarification uh, I, since. I think I mean the way I understand it is probably they meant that you have the blocks on one side and you can drag them to the editor and it would transform to text. That's how I interpret. Oh. Okay. If it's that, it's it sounds interesting. So the, the thing with, with Stripe is that the, what you see is actually what the code looks like. So we're not, uh, we're not showing something different than what the code actually is. So uh, again, I'm going to share the screen. As you can see, if you, if you go through it, that's pure uh, Python code. The only thing that may be a bit different is the, how we present the uh, the indentation because in Python you have indentation, uh, but everything else reads like a like a Python code. And if I if I if I try and open the the Python code side by side, you can see that it's exactly what you see is what you get. Nothing different. So for example, other systems like let's say MakeCode, uh, they have a, a few different things from from the blocks to the to the actual uh, to the actual code. So we have the exact same thing like if it's like reading it line by line you get the exact thing so that's that's why we're uh we think it's closer to uh to the to the actual python side and it also has the the, the block based you know uh, uh ui features like drag and drop and things like that but it's actual python code wrapped around you know some graphical shells so someone says, if it's only an online application, yep, at the moment it's only an online application. Uh, we're also considering of having it, you know, for download, but uh, we just finished our first uh, uh, version of, you know, a full working uh, and final prototype, and we, we didn't have time to do it at the moment. We, we may do it uh, in the future. 